Now, he's been dubbed the John Stewart of the Arab world, Bassem Youssef, the Egyptian satirist who was forced into exile after years of mocking his own country's ruling elite. After rebuilding his life and his public image as an American citizen, the heart surgeon turned comedian has found a new focus for his increasingly dark sense of humor. It's mostly his own story, but he cannot avoid what's happening in Gaza, where his wife has family. I spoke to Bassem here in the London studio this week while he took time out from his stand-up world tour. You have family in Gaza, your wife's family, your in-laws are there, right? Yes. And tell me, can you talk to them? No, uh, I mean, I've been touring, so it's been difficult. It's been difficult enough for them to be in touch with my wife and her family. But the thing is, uh, they have, like, many families there, like cousins and uncles, and they all left their houses in Khan Yunus and Gaza and northern Gaza. And now they are in one apartment, in one building in Rafah, sharing it with 25, 25 other families. And, you know, at any moment we can hear a, a bomb drop. But it's okay because Israel will apologize, I'm sure, as they all usually do. I mean, like, I was so happy to listen to their sincere apology for killing the people from Central Kitchen. Oh my God, like the, the pain that they have to go through. I mean, even like one of their spokesmen tweeted on Twitter, it's like, see what Hamas made me do. It's like, it is so, so interesting. And the thing is, um, what's really, for me, what's very interesting is the outrage, the global outcry. It's like, oh, how could you do that Israel? But we forget, we forget James Miller. Uh, a British filmmaker that was also killed by uh, Israeli snipers. We forget Tom uh, Hartland, which he was like also a British activist uh, who's killed in the head. With a, we forget Shirin Abu A'la, the, the American-Palestinian reporter. It's like every time it's like, oh, Hamas did it. Oh, we did it. We're so sorry. There will be absolutely no accountability of what they did in Gaza for the past six months. This is what pains me. Do you not think the tone is changing? given the mounting Sli death toll. Slightly, in Gaza. but it, it, is, it is performative, performative rage. Like the, the world readers are so enraged about Israel killing the seven workers. And I, you know, we, we talk about that, but I, I find that there's more rage about killing seven foreign workers more than the rage about well, killing 30,000 Palestinians. I mean, look. Remember we, when we, we were say said, that. Remember when 30,000 30, was too much? Remember when 3,000 Palestinians was too much? Yeah. You know what happened? Three thousand. You know, tomorrow, if three hundred thousand Palestinians kill, nobody will care. Nobody will care. Numbers don't mean anything. Why anymore. do you think that is? Because they don't look at Palestinians as equal human beings. I don't speak about the current events because I can't. I do my show, which is like my personal story. It's a still very funny show. Please come to the show, and you will enjoy it. And I, it's a kind of a break. It's the only way where I can be a break of what's happening. I cannot deal with that on a daily basis in my comedy. I can't. So tell me about your show then. What, how my do you show deal with it? is my own personal story from a heart surgeon turned comedian, had to be interrogated for his comedy for six hours, uh, had to leave the country because of my Your jokes. own country? Either. Yes. I found myself in a gun rally. I found myself in two blocks away from a bombing. <laughs> I find myself uh, in, in the process of trying to be an American citizen. So it's a more of a personal story that anybody can relate to. What was it like <laughs> starting over in America? It was terrible. Because you went from being number one star... Into in, a nobody. Okay, into... Well, yeah, into a, a nobody. nobody. I was going to comedy clubs trying to make, to make it there and people not laughing. And it, it, it humiliates you, <laughs> humbles you and humiliates you at the same time. And uh, it, it, it was a journey. It, uh, and uh, doing stand-up comedy in your second language, doing stand-up comedy in, in general is difficult. Doing it in your second language is even added uh, an added pressure. And I tell this everywhere. I remember my fans from Egypt would come to my stand-up comedy show and they see me as, of course, I, I wasn't good. I was like, they were so disappointed. Like, oh, Basim, he's going to drive an Uber in six months from now. He's done. I've always noticed that your struggle is towards bringing people together. That's yes. what I've noticed. And yes. I want to ask you about a project that I read about, and I want to know if it's true. Mm. You've bought the rights to a book. The book happens to be called uh, The Muslim and the Jew. It's translated uh, in English. It's written by a German author. And it tells the story of a group of Egyptians and Arabs who lived in Berlin, basically, and saved hundreds of Jews from the Holocaust. Yes. Tell me about the, the story and why you want to do this. Uh, this is a story that I bought the right to a year ago, even before October 7th. And after October 7th, I actually bought the, the lifetime rights, not just the option for two years. And it's called The Muslim and Jew in Germany. It was translated to an English book called uh, Anna and Dr. Helmi. And it talks about Dr. Helmi, an Egyptian doctor who lived in Berlin under Nazi Germany. And he formed an under, uh, a, a group of underground network with other Arabs and saved 300 Jews from the Holocaust. 
And I think it's a, it's a great story because the Holocaust is a human story, not, not just a Jewish story, and definitely not an Israeli story. And I think this is a way to show that in the end of the day, we are people and we have so much in common and we should not use human tragedies. We not to, should use excuses of different ethnicities in order to inflict the same pain that was done upon us on other people, especially if those people had nothing to do with that uh, tragedy. And I want to show that like even before the establishment of Israel, Arabs and Jews in Germany lived a life of harmony and, 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 and cohabitation, and they were even closer together than the, uh, the German Christians. And, there, and, and, and the Holocaust is a, a very important part of our contemporary history, and we have a role in it, like saving other peoples from there, and we're being erased. So as an Arab, I want to actually show our story, ourselves, and put us into the, into the place where we actually have a say and a, and a place in, in human history.